Good morning, everyone, um, and welcome to our webinar this morning, which is to meet your residence manager. Um, thank you to everyone who's joined today, especially for those who've had to either stay up late or wake up uh, really early. Um, so yeah, if you could let us know in the chat box where you're joining us from today, and I'll read some of those out. Ah, oh, we got someone from uh, Tavascott in Devon, um, Sweden, someone from Sweden, someone from Australia, uh, someone from Germany, uh, Melbourne, Australia, two, two Aussies, um, Hong Kong, Munich in Germany, um, someone joining from Mumbai in India. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Tavistock in Devon. Yeah, Tavistock in Devon. Perfect. Someone joining from Singapore, uh, Belgium, someone in London as well. That's great. Me and Cecilia are both in London as well today, so local. And that's someone else from India, another person from London as well. Someone from France. It's really great to see so many of you. Um, yeah, so we'll, what today is um, a chance we'll have a presentation with, um, and then we'll have a question and answer session at the end. So any questions that you think of um, throughout the presentation, um, pop them in the, in the chat box and we will answer them at the end. Just to say as well, um, if we don't manage to answer all your questions, we will get back to you after the webinar. So um, you'll get a follow up email by the end of this week with an answer to your queries if they're kind of quite specific or we just run out of time and we're not able to answer them. Um, so, yeah, first things first, introduction. So uh, I'm Sarah. I work in the accommodation services team um, and we're joined here today by Cecilia, who is your residence manager at the costume store. So um, yeah, really great to have you all. Um, so we'll get started with the presentation. So I'll hand over to Cecilia. Hello, good morning, everyone. We're gonna go through the presentation. <laughs> See? So what do you need to know before you arrive? Um, you need to bring your, um, um, you need to make sure that you um, understand that you have completed your e-induction and you have read all your guidebook as well. Um, you need to make sure that you have read your tenancy agreement as well. So you familiarize yourself with the building and with, with the rules and regulations in here. Um, we will be giving you some, on the day that you're moving in on the 9th, there will be some uh, refreshments and some food and some entertainment for you guys. There will be um, lots of things to do, music as well. And if you want to bring your parents, you can come and you can just chill out on the courtyard and on the common room as well. Um, there's a lot of trolleys as well. So when you're moving in and out of the building, you can just like, it's easier for you and you don't have no injuries as well. Um, that's what you need to, to bring some water as well. Uh, bring some comfort to clothes as well, because it's going to be probably very hot and be calm as well. Um, what else do you need to know? Um, that's it, I think so. You just come in here, be happy, and any question, we, we will have UAL um, staff and IQ, which is a provider um, of the accommodation, and we are all here to actually help you in any, any problems that you have. Just when you go into the lift, don't try to cramp it up, because otherwise it can be um, an issue as well. So just, just come down. <laughs> Um, the rent information, do you want me to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I'm happy to, to pitch in. Do you want, do you want me yeah. to go through? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so rent payment dates. So we've got the, uh, rent payment dates for each term, um, shown on the screen at the moment. Um, obviously for students who are receiving student loans, sometimes the date of 
the when the student loan um, arrives in your bank account will be later than that first payment date. So that's uh, that's okay. Um, you just need to let us know um, when you expect to receive the payment, um, and then we'll update your first rent payment based on that, and and the following on payment dates as well. On the next screen, we'll have the email address of where you can let us know this information. So there's three different ways to pay your rent. It's either one full payment, um, either by credit card or debit card, and that would have been when you accepted your offer. So for those who have gone for that option, you probably would have already um, gone through that. Um, then we have the termly payment option. Um, it's just worth noting that the card that you use as your initial deposit payment is the card that will be used for the payment plan so if um, you want to use a different card again make sure that you contact the accommodation finance team to let them know that you want to use a different card there is also the option to do bank transfer for international students um, and this option will appear when you accept your accommodation offer so you probably will be aware of this already um, so yeah as i said the 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 details of how to let us know if you need to update your payment card or information about your student loan um, payments. And um, you can do that by either emailing us or by calling the number provided. Um, you will also have a finance administrator for your hall. Cecilia, that's B, isn't that, is that right for, for the customer? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so B is your designated finance administrator. Um, so as well as being on call for emails and uh, by phone, she does also visit the hall from time to time and she'll let you know when she's gonna be there. So if you are struggling with payments or need to set up um, specific payment plans, depending on what your needs are, then she's the best person to talk to. Um, we definitely like to say that they, B and her colleagues within the finance team are there to, to help you. Um, if you are feeling nervous or stressed about payments, um, it's definitely best to speak with them to work, to work through what we can do to help you. And then I'll hand back over to Cecilia for the actual check-in process. So when, you check, when you're checking in, as I said, you need to bring your ID. And if you know your um, ID number from the student area, because it's very important for us. So when you come, it will be a line and then you will have to check um, a form. This form will let you know which is your room number and you just need to sign it up. And we will let you know, it's a welcome pack. And then the pack will tell you like, what kind of SIM card you can use, what are the health and safety um, procedures that we, we take every Friday, uh, anything related with how to cook as well or um, guest policy, things like that. It will have all, all the information in there. It's very brief and this is a summary of the most important things that you need to know. Uh, they will give you a key. There are three keys. One is the FOP that will let you in in, uh, in your block, which are four, four blocks in here, A, B, C and D. The other key is for your room, exactly. It's a physical key. And they have a small key that is your uh, postbox key as well. So all of the three, you have to have them all the time. And if you lose them, you then you have to pay for another one. Um, once you have checked in, um, then it's very important that you bring a toilet toilet roll. Don't forget that if you just because sometimes <laughs> it's uh, you're a bit nervous. And there's the Tesco's next door, so you can just buy the basic things as well. It's just like two minutes away from, from the hall, and then you have a Sainsbury. For those ones who are not familiarized, what is a Tesco or a Sainsbury? It's just a convention shop, shop that you can buy um, food and all the um, the basic things that you need um, to, to live in, in here. Um, what else do you need to know? Um, once you have established yourself in, in the hall, um, if you want to come and talk to me uh, and if you want to know what is in the area, we can have, we can talk or you can talk to one of the committed members. They already know what is in here and then they can let you um, wander around. There's a lot of things going on in here um, in this area. There's a lot of construction going on, not in the in the building, but there's a lot of constructions around. It's a very upbringing area at the moment, but we have amazing job to 
two stops away. It's called Westfield. It's the most amazing uh, retail shop, and there's bars, there's uh, activities, outdoor and indoor activities, shopping, everything. You will love it. So what do I do? So my role in here is to make sure that you are comfortable in this accommodation. And if you have any issues with uh, uh, your neighbors, um, your flatmates, uh, if you have uh, issues with, uh, as, as Sarah said, finances, I have to be able to give you the correct uh, tools in order for you to go and, um, and talk to these people. Uh, if we have if you want to just talk to me that's fine we can just talk about um things that is happening in your life uh and if you need more support as well i can guide you to that uh if you have any issues maintenance I, i'm the one who you need to come and talk to me if the iqp um staff hasn't um fixed the problem there is a um as um so an account that you need to create in able to lock all your uh, maintenance issues is very important that you do this because otherwise it will not be able to track it once you come to reception yes you can tell them but sometimes because the reception is very busy sometimes they can get lost so i would recommend you to actually log in into this um, iq portal log everything in there and if they haven't done it then come to me and i will speak to them and it will be sorted out as soon as possible if you need any reference uh, when you, you want to open an account, a bank account, something like that, again, you can do this on the portal nowadays. You can just log in in there and then they will download like your tenancy agreement and where the room number and everything as well. If you have any issues, come to me as well. What is inside your room? Um, well, it's just very basic. You have the bed, the mattress, a mattress protector, you have a desk, a desk chair, a bin. Um, all the rooms in here are in suite. So you have your toilet as well, unless you have been allocated on a studio, then you have your own kitchen. Uh, most of the in suite rooms, they share the kitchen with, um, with between eight and five people. Um, and then if you have uh, in the kitchen, you have a, um, a cupboard, so you can just put your stuff in there and you can just let them know to, to the students, to, to your flatmates, which one is yours, but it's enough space. If you want to bring your own cupboard, you can do it as well. You're more than welcome. Please do not put any blue tag or any hooks in the room because at the moment, when they're trying to take it off, the paint comes out and then you will not get charged use we have a massive pin board in on top of the bed and by the desk so use that one if uh, don't put any led lights don't put any fairy lights and if you want to put it try not to like um glue them either you can use them you can put it in a in a, in a base or in a, in a glass jar things like that but don't put it on the ceiling please <laughs> and don't smoke either in the room or in the shower or in the shower room that's all Inside the, the, the building, you have a big common room that you can use anytime you want. It's 24 seven. We, on the first floor, block A, you have a workshop that you can actually uh, do your creative uh, homework. Like for example, you can, um, they have massive mirrors. So it just used um, doing some makeup. You can have like tables just in case you do an architecture or designs. Uh, again, if you want to use that workshop, it's 24 seven, you just need to bring your ID and they will let you in. You need to sign like a form of, um, once you are entered, you need to clean after yourself. Also, you have laundrette. The laundry uh, room is just, is, you use an app and they will let you know when the washing machine is ready or when your washing machine has been uh, finished. Um, the name of the, the laundry is Circuit. I don't know if people that are familiarized of this company. It's really good. You can either have a cart or you can just use an app. Um, when you have deliveries in the building, most of the parcels will be kept in reception and the postman will put any 
any uh, letters inside your post box. You just need to be mindful of that IQ team do not accept any liability for any loss of parcels and letters in here because it, that's the way it, it is they wrote basically. But we most when they come around 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, they put all the parcels, they take a pictures as a proof that they have left it, and then the IQ team just um, store them on reception and the back door. So you need to make sure that every day, if you have uh, ordered something, you need to come downstairs and make sure that you, you pick up your parcel because we don't have enough storage needed. So the better you, the, the quicker you come and pick, pick it up, the better for us as well. And reception is 24 seven. So uh, the IQ team work from eight o'clock in the morning to 8 p.m. in the afternoon. Then security team comes over from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. So it's always manners at the desk. So if you have any issues uh, with anyone, then you can come to reception and we will sort out. If you have, if you hear someone who is screaming in, in the courtyard because in the courtyard you can smoke, uh, then uh, you can just call the telephone, the emergency telephone, which is uh, the same, the reception number, and then someone will go and disperse the students after 11 p.m. Because after 11 p.m. you're not supposed to be making any noise in this country. That's it. I know it's a lot of information, but don't worry. If you have any issues, come again to me and we will talk about it. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to talk now a bit about Hall's Life. So Hall's Life is the events program, uh, events and wellbeing program that's run throughout the UAL accommodation. So for the latest information about what the Hall's Life team are up to, um, it's best to follow them on Instagram, so um, it's just at UAL Hall's Life, all one word, um, and there it's on there, if you're not already following, uh, student videos, blogs, blogs from um, their time living in halls, and also updates on the latest events um, and parties that they're hosting. So at the costume store, there'll be a hall committee um, who are made up of students, just like yourself, um, and they're mostly first year students, second year students who um, have chosen to work during their time living in halls. And they'll be arranging weekly events um, for all of you to attend. Um, just worth saying, if there's something, that an event that you would like to see happening at your halls, by all means, um, go and talk to them and discuss it with them if it's something that they could arrange. Um, it's, it's your experience in halls um, and they wanna make sure that they're offering events that students would like to see. So yeah, your input is um, what, what makes the program great. Um, there is also external events, um, getting out and exploring London. So things like a boat party that's held on the Thames, um, theatre trips and lots of different excursions out and about in London. So if it's your first time where you're going to be living in London, this is a great way to kind of explore um, and see, see everything that the city has to offer. There's also um, our event page, the website page. So it's just shown on, on, the, on the screen at the moment. All this information in terms of any links, email addresses, phone numbers, this will all be in your guidebook. So don't feel as if you have to write it all down now. Um, all this information is on there as well. Uh, the other part of the Hall's Life is the wellbeing aspect. So um, this is called Here For You. Um, and the, the Halls Life team are there for you morning, noon and night if you um, want to get any free food products. Um, these will be available within your common room. So if you come down with a, a plastic container to your common room, you'll be able to fill up um, your box and make a, a healthy meal um, with the food that is offered. Um, there's also free period products, which is going to be available across all the halls. Um, so if you ever if you ever need them, you can you can head down to reception to get those. Um, there's also a here for you coffee and chat sessions that are going to be run regularly within your halls. Theme wellbeing events each month um, and taboo Tuesdays. So they cover um, uh, topics and conversations that maybe you might feel nervous or a bit apprehensive about talking about. So whether that's around consent. Um, STIs, 
things like that that um, you kind of are coming across and you might just want to have a bit more information about it. There will also be wellbeing boxes that will be um, available um, from your Halls Life team. So if you ever feel like you need a pick me up or um, just need something to kind of maybe for mindfulness, that's a it's a good um, free free box that um, is given out to students. There's also access across the halls to STI testing, pregnancy tests and free condoms. So if you ever feel you need them or need to use them, then they are readily available. Um, we've got the email address as well for here for you if you ever need to get in contact, as well as the poster shown on the right hand side of the screen. So these will be up and around the hall. Um, kind of in lifts and on the ground floor. So again, if you ever feel that you need to um, have support, find support, um, this is the best way of getting hold of the Hall's Life team. I'll hand back to Cecilia on the health and safety stuff. Sorry, I'm trying to take off my mute. Um, so every Friday we do a um, weekly fire alarm, which means that um, from 11 a.m. to half past 11, sometimes at 12, depends how it's busy it is the building. We'll, um, our maintenance guys will uh, test the, um, the call points that are around the building. Uh, so you will hear the alarm. Sometimes if they are doing it in block B, you will not hear it in block A. And the same for block A, you will not hear it in block B or C or D. Um, we do three fire drills uh, timely. Uh, we will not let you know when it is because we want you guys to come downstairs and actually um, do the, the proper procedures um, that, that needs to be done in case there is a real fire one of these times. The assembly points, it will be given to you on the welcome pack. But again, this is on the back of the door of your room, the back of the door of the hall and of the um, flat and on the kitchen as well. So it's everywhere where it's assembly point, which is very, very near and here. It's just around the corner. When, once you come out of the building on the left hand side or on the right hand side, there are two of them. Um, if for any, for any of you, you have never done a fire drill, um don't run that's the worst thing you can do do not use the lift neither because it will not that will not work they will go all the way down to the ground floor um bring uh if you, if you don't bring your kids that's okay we will hear to open the doors afterwards uh but if you have a gold bag yes in case a real fire ha happens yes put in there some like blankets or anything like that like if it's cold and, and during the winter or it's Summer bring a bottle, something like that, like it can be on, on your door as soon as it happens. Um, the nearest fire escape uh, for your rooms will be you, you have to follow the running men, which I still don't understand why it's a running man because it's not supposed to be running, but it is a green running man and you just follow it, whatever is telling you the hours to go. Yeah, which is basically your flat, uh, outside your flat and then through this land, um, staircase and all the way into the courtyard. And I will let you know, don't worry, you don't have, once you're here, you will understand what I'm trying to say. You just follow the running men, okay? Uh, as I said before, um, I'm very um, hard on people who are smoking in the rooms or in the inside the uh, bathroom, in the kitchens. Don't do it. Don't put any socks on the fire, uh, on, the, on the smoke detectors. Uh, because I will give you a warning and these warnings it will go straight to the dean and it is not good for your records so as I said the rooms are for you to live and study but not to make um, to, to have an, an accident in there because if you're smoking or you or you're vaping or you put an incense on candles this is not allowed because something happens and then the whole room can inflame in less than 30 seconds. You have to see your, the video of URL about this. And then it's not only you, but it's as well your flatmates around and the people around you as well. So you need to be careful with that. If you have any um, 
mental or physical health condition, you have to come and see me and we will do something called PIP. That is um, a PIP is for you guys to, to uh, evaluate how can we help you in case there's a fire alarm um, or if you have any needs that you make me, need to make me aware as well, let me know if you can't evacuate the building without no help. Um, some people, they have um, leg injury, arm injury, they have seizures, they have panic attacks, and they just need to let, just let me know that, for example, you will be able to evacuate, but you will be one of the last ones. And I will put that on my feet, which is fine. Um, you, the cutting mat, we will put them on the, on the desk of your room. But if you don't have one, just let me know and I will give you one as well. Uh, don't use the spray cans, naked flames, as I said, and nothing. That's why we have a, a workshop in here. You can use all these things. But again, anything with flame is not allowed in this building. You can't smoke in any inside of a building, only than the courier. And that's it. Personal safety. Uh, use a licensed cab. We have Ubers in here as well, like probably all around London and all the world. The world. Uh, cabs are fine, black taxis, uh, city mappers as well. Please be careful of this, your surrounding uh, the first months that you are here. Uh, if, if you have bags or backpacks, just try to keep them tight. It is not dangerous, but there's a lot of people who spot people who have just arrived to London and they are a bit naive. So just be careful with that, okay? Because we, we can call the police and everything, but I would prefer that if you are um, more aware of this random where you are before going out. If you're going, coming back home at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., just be mindful of that. Sure. So yeah, just um, a final page, just about the wider support available to you whilst you're in accommodation and at UAL. So obviously Cecilia is here on hand for that initial support um, and signposting to you, signposting you to the right services that are available within UAL. So beyond the the accommodation team, we have UAL student services um, and they can be contacted if you're struggling um, and you feel that you need extra support and they offer a range of services. So this includes student advisors, counsellors, health advisors, chaplains, uh, disability advisors, dyslexia coordinators and specialist tutors. It's not pointed out on there, but there's also um, a team who help with financial advice um, and support as well. So if that's something that you also need, that is available to you. And you can find out more um, about student services, how to contact them, the different departments by visiting their webpage, which is shown at the bottom. Again, all this information is within the guidebook. So um, if you don't write down the webpage today, that's okay. You can still um, search for it within your guidebook. And if there's any keywords within the guidebook that you're looking for, if you just do a, a search for that particular word, then it will take you to the, the page that you're looking for. So whether it's, you know, you want to type in maintenance or posters or, you know, what you are and aren't allowed to do, as long as you have that keyword, you'll be able to find it within the guidebook. Um, so yeah, that's it. I'll leave it, um, the presentation on this final page. Um, as that's got our main details, our main email address. If you think of something after today, any questions that you have, this is your first point of call. You can either give us a call um, on the numbers provided, or you can send us an email um, at accommodation.arts.ac.uk. Um, so yeah, that's great. Um, so now we're gonna move to the question and answer session. Um, so let's get started. Someone's asked about the move-in date. Um, they haven't said whether they're uh, higher education, whether they're doing an undergraduate or um, maybe a postgraduate degree. So what I would say is for any students who are unsure of their arrival, the move-in date, um, it's best to log into your accommodation portal to find out your tenancy dates. 
Um, so that will be within your accommodation portal. So if you check on there, you'll be able to find out what your move-in date is. Our main dates are the 2nd of September or the 9th of September, but depending on what course you're doing will depend on which, uh, which date is your move-in date. Um, someone's asked us here if we can go over what students need to do when they arrive, specifically if they're an international student. Um, would you be able to just go through, you know, they're, they're arriving at, on the day, what is it that they need to do, where they need to go, what they need to bring? Yes, of course. Um, it's very simple. It's, it doesn't really matter whether you're international or national. It's exactly the same thing. You come to reception, you talk to one of the people who are on the reception desk, and then we let you know uh, which desk you have to go, because we're going to be dividing. Like, for example, uh, you come to the main one, and they'll say, oh, maybe you are in block B, and I will, they will tell you, go to block B, you will go to the block B, and then you will have to say your name, an ID, and that's it. ID can be your passport, um, a drug license, uh, a student ID, anything that has your face and your name on it. That's all. And then it will give you a form. That form you have to fill it up. They will give you the keys. And there you go. That's all you need to do. Yeah. And then also, just because this one comes up a lot, once you have your key and you've moved in, you're free to come and go from the halls at whatever time you like, day and night. It's your, yes. it's your home. It's your home. Have yeah, we don't have a curfew or anything like that, so it's no your... Curfew. The yeah. only curfew that there is, is that at 11 o'clock, you cannot make any noise, do not put any music on, and if you want, just put your head, um, earbuds or headphones, things like that. Um, because you need to be mindful that other students, they're probably sleeping earlier than you, and you don't want to cause any uh, friction between your flatmates on the first couple of weeks or months. Um, and um, yes, one of the things I forgot to mention is once you uh, check in, as soon as you go into the room, take a picture or a video of everything because you need to do an inventory. So you have seven days to complete the inventory, which the way it has to be completed is the IQ team will send you a link and then that link will, will make you to create an account again. And then you just have to click the things that you think they have. Um, they are clean or not clean, or for example, if there is a stain in the carpet, is there is some blue tack uh, on the wall, things like that. Minimal things that you think probably they're not going to charge me, you have to take a picture because they are very, um, it's very important. If this is your house and you have to um, make sure that what what is given to you um, uh, is, is, is what you, you want and they don't charge you afterwards after the, the checkout. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, very important. Great. Um, next question. Um, someone's asked about trolleys and getting their um, luggage from the reception up to their room, how that works. As I said at the beginning, we have plane clitorals here. We have like around 100 of them. <laughs> so the you will come and one of the committee members, uh, which is UAL, we have a list and then you just need to give your name. Uh, and then they will give you a trolley. The trolley they are like very basics. It's, it's one of those ones that are on the floor, and then you just push them over, and then you can just put stuff in there, stuff with them in there. Just don't put too much because you can bend, they can bend. But yes, we we have plenty of them. We make sure this that they have enough for the people that are in here. And you have to return them again because um, you can't just leave them in there. You need to go back again to to see the person who has given it to you so they can take you off of the list. Mm -hmm. um, someone's asked how many people um, live in a shared flat? It will depend on the, on the block. As I said before, it can be between five to eight people. Some mm -hmm. of them on the one that is, um, no, nine people, sorry. They have, on block A, they have studios. So they have two studios on, a, on the same flat and then the rest they just in suites. But the ones who are in the studio, usually they just keep themselves to themselves and they don't go to the to the kitchen because they already have their own kitchen so they don't use the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, there's a few students that have said that they're going to be arriving uh, slightly later than their, the start of their tenancy and if there's anything that they need to know or anything that will be different for their experience. No, no, really. 
So it's the same. As I said, the reception is Monday 24-7. You come if you, you you come if you come on the 26th. Some of uh, some of the people who has done the induction, the completed induction, has told me that they come on the 26th September. Some of them in October. You just need to come, show your ID, and we will give you the keys. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things we do, for example, for people who hasn't moving, um, they're moving out, moving in late, is that we have to go into the room to do some something called flashing the bags. So this is important as well for when you go on a holiday. If you don't use the taps, which is the shower and the basin, we need to flush them for three minutes, so it doesn't have um, it doesn't have bacteria growing on in there. That is what happens when you don't use the tap. So we will have the, the we have to do this health and safety for the rooms. That's all. So if you see some water marks in there, because it's because we have been going um, in, in in the flat to do um, the flushing of the system. Great. Um, there's one here about, actually there's a few, students are asking about when they can find out their room, either for deliveries or so that they can get to know their flatmates. So just to confirm, we don't um, provide room numbers before you check in. This is because um, sometimes the uh, room allocations, not the room type, but the actual room number may change depending on if there's been cancellations or um, if uh, students need a, a means that we need to move them to a different room, or you know, if they're staying for over two years, we might have to put them into a different room. So we don't give out room numbers until students arrive. However, what I would say is that there is um, a Discord chat that's been set up for all students for the costume store. So um, you would have been sent that information by email. So look out for that. Um, and also for deliveries, if you um, just put in the costume store um, and also if possible to just put the, that you're a new student, then your deliveries can be um, received at reception and we can keep them aside until you do arrive. Um, so yeah, for, for that one. Um, then, Next one, um, Cecilia, someone's asked about whether they can bring an air fryer with them. Yes, you can have an air fryer, um, but it's the same concept. You can not cook anything inside your rooms. You have to put it in the in the kitchen because you can't put kettles in the room. You cannot put hobs in your rooms. You cannot put fridges in your rooms unless you need, you have a need for medical need for the fridge in there. Like for example, you need to store an EpiPen or some medicine, that's all. With the air fryer, you need to be careful because um, sometimes if you don't clean it, because it's so easy to use, but if you don't clean it, they can be cause uh, um, fire when you're using them. So for example, the toasters as well, we provided the toaster, but if you don't clean the toasters and then you take the debris, that it can cause as well fire and you just it's a lot of like housekeeping the more you keep, keep your products clean the better and it's good health and safety as well but yes you can bring it just label it if you if you don't want anyone else to, to use it yeah we actually have a whole article on air fryers and how best to use them so if you within your um guidebook if you just search for air fryer then it will take you to the link of where, where to find all the information of how best to use an air fryer. Um, Cecilia, would you be able to cover what students need to bring in terms of like bedding and um, things for the kitchen, so pots and pans? Okay, so basically you are coming into a bare uh, room and a bare kitchen, yeah? So I would recommend you to bring everything you want in your in your in your room, for example, pillows, bedding, mattress, and no mattress, uh, uh, duvet covers, uh, cushions, toilets, cleaning products, anything that is in your home at the moment, just bring it in here. For the kitchen, it's a bit more tricky because I will tell you to bring a lot of pots and pans and storage and things like that. I would recommend you to actually speak to your flatmates. And maybe you can share the pots and pans if you really want to do that. Because if not, then what's happening at the moment is people they're bringing a lot of of, of kitchen products, uh, the spoons, forks, and stuff like that. And it overcrowds the kitchen, and it looks messy. 
and then they get lost as well. Uh, and then the kitchen, it looks really unclean. And then again, this is one of the things I forgot to I mention. We do kitchen inspections every month and room inspections every, every uh, termly. So if it's not tidy, then you have bad points and then you have to redo it. So bring the basics uh, of the kitchen uh, um, utensils and things like that and to be speak to your flatmate. And maybe you can just like do a pot and just be more homely. Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, I would say as well in the guidebook, sorry to keep going on about the guidebook, but it does say what is provided in the hall um, and in your flat and in your kitchen. So what is provided is the iron, ironing board, hoover, um, kettle, microwave. Um, so those things do not need to be um, brought right. with you, but it's just anything that you would use to actually do the cooking um, and the, the bedding, then that's the bits that you need to bring yourself. And that with the Hoover, sorry. No, no, no. With the Hoover, we give you bags as well, so you don't have to buy them. So you come to reception, and then once the bag is full, we can just give you a new one. So it's mm -hmm. very easy, very simple as well. Perfect. Um, someone's also actually there's been a few people that are asking about the guests, um, how many people they can have stay and how long they can stay for. If you're able to so answer that. There is a whole guest policy on your contract, article mm -hmm. number eight. <laughs> and then that one, it says that you can, during the day, you can bring two guests and then they have to sign in. Every guest needs to be signed in, in, in the reception. In case there is a fire, we take the guest book as well. And then if the fire brigade comes, he, we can count how many people there have been in the building. During the mm -hmm. night, you can only bring one person you have to sign them in. And they can stay up to three nights in the building, uh, but you have to sign them in and out every time they go inside the building. And it's every 14 days, um, four, four nights, I think, so it is. Uh, you can't bring more than two uh, during the night. And if you get from the morning, they're not gonna stay, they need to be removed of the building or check out before 11 p.m. And that's it. Yeah, perfect. Um, Someone's asked about just if we could go over again, Cecilia, the how they can collect their post and parcels from reception. Okay, so you come to reception and you say, My name is Maria. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. from room uh, 1.3. Uh, and then the people in reception that will ask you for an ID just to double check that who you are is who you're saying you are. And then they give you the, 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 the parcel and that's it. Mm -hmm. Very simple, very straightforward. Sometimes yeah. Amazons, they come um, late as well. So you have to come in and out of um, reception just to double check when it has arrived. But again, everyone knows that when Amazons is delivered, it will tell, it will give you um, a, a pin saying your parcel has been delivered. Now, we have a lot of student accommodations around this area, and sometimes they deliver into the wrong address. So you will have to go to the other receptions and have a look at that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, just, I'm gonna finish on this last one. Um, as I said, anything that we haven't managed to answer, we will get back to you by the end of this week. So you will get an answer to your questions. Um, but I'll just ask this one as there was a few people that said it. Um, but some people are just asking for the check-in whether they need to bring a, because um, I think on, on for some halls this is needed, um, but they're just asking whether they need a passport picture, um, and the answer to that is no, just the passport or driving license itself, um, and you don't need to print off your um, arrival pass if you're unable to, just having a screenshot of it um, which shows your student ID number, it just to be honest, it just helps you because when you fill out your arrival form, you'll be asked for your student ID. So just having it there to hand is, is just one less thing to worry about. So that's the reason why we say about the arrival pass. Um, if you're a bit late, if you've chosen arrival time, if you arrive a few hours late, that's OK. If you arrive even a few days late, that's all right. We may get in contact just to make sure that you're still um, planning on coming, just for our own um, notes to make sure that we know that you're going to be arriving. But yeah, in terms of if your plans change, you have to arrive later um, than your arrival date, that is more than okay. Um, we'll be here and waiting to, to greet you when you do arrive. 
Um, Cecilia, is there anything else you want to say as well? Or? No, I'm just looking forward to see you and meet you. Yeah, perfect. Well, yeah, thanks again, everyone, for attending. Um, this webinar will be sent to everyone who has attended, um, who signed up, so you'll get the recording as well. So if you want to watch it back a few days' time, then by all means do. Um, and yeah, uh, it's great to have so many of you on here, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Bye.